Hello and welcome back to this Library of Rudo series. In this video, we'll be taking on the Distorted Ensemble. We're finally at the story's climax, so let's get started. Before I talk about the pages in the fight, I want to point out the bar at the top right that lets you switch floors. Most people I know use the tree in the middle, which is gone at this stage, and the pre-bell doesn't let you adjust passives. I had honestly forgotten about it when I was starting my research and was worried that I'd have to redo the entire gauntlet to get the pages I wanted. Anyways, I ended up using some familiar faces. Purple tier guard stands with ominous power, 2 leap, 2 energy conversion, 3 overcharge and beyond with triple R suit, charge shield, energy discharge and double hauler. Olivier Singleton with 4 light regen, wolf the prescript, emotional turbulence, identify weak point, augury kick and true trigon formation with Mjongist and double hauler. Nikolai Upsal enablers with graze de grass, multi slash, bulky impact, quick suppression, duel of the city, will of the prescript, celestial spear, concentration and disposal with maximum crash, bionic charge synchronized hull and double hauler. Elena Singleton with the same deck as Olivier but with blood spreading instead of true trigon formation, with eye of death innervation, fervor, mind hauler and keep in stride. And Shao Singleton with the same deck as Olivier but with let's have some fun instead of puppet blockade, with flaring brand, plume discussion, volatile passion and double hauler. Having sustain is important because this is a rather long fight. I used Malkuth's 4 for this fight, but you should use whatever is most comfortable for you. Now for the fight itself. This is a 3 act fight with the first act facing you against Philip, Eileen, Greta, and the musicians of Bremen. Philip has 190 HP, 110 stagger, is blunt stagger and slash injured, and has 8 passives. Speed 3, Shimmering, Tempered Passion, which gives him power equal to half his current emotion level as well as inflicting 3 burn to all characters when going up in emotion level. Cold Heart, which makes him take no damage from burn. Borrowed Embers, which makes it so that while Philip is alive, all allies inflict 1 burn with the first defensive die they play each engagement on hit, but when he dies, makes all allies receive 1 burn when they're hit. Super Heat, which makes him deal more damage if he has 10 or more burn at the start of a scene. Scorching Desperation, which adds a mass attack to his hand every 3 scenes. And Restraints, which makes him immobilize targets with 3 or more stacks of restraint on them on hit. His deck consists of 4 cards, not including the mass attack that gets added. Distorted Courage is a melee page rolling 4-8 pierce, 5-8 blunt, 4-7 pierce with all dice inflicting 2 burn to self and target on hit, as well as giving 1 negative emotion coin on hit. This page's base rolls aren't too high, so at the start of the fight, most of your 3 cost bombs will beat it, but when his Tempered Passion is stacked, it'll become harder, necessitating power stacking on your part. Wind of Sorrow is a ranged page rolling 4-9, 5-9, 8-10 pierce, with all dice inflicting 2 burn to self and target on hit, and, on use, if the target has 8 or more burn, it gains 2 power. The 3 is fairly strong, especially if he gets the 2 bonus power, but it'll lose to a Mayongus die usually. You can bring a page like Celestial Spear or Trails of Blue to count this page, especially since some other pages require strong ones, but I'd limit it to 2 or 3 of your librarians because it loses some of the effectiveness in later acts. Also, if you're on Gebra's floor, you could use Onrush or Greatest Split Vertical here. Restraint is a melee page with 2 6-10 pierce dice. The first one inflicts 1 feeble, disarm, and bind, as well as giving a negative emotion coin, and the second one inflicts 1 restraint on hit, as well as giving a negative emotion coin. Restraint doesn't do anything on its own, but it doesn't go away, and Philip has a passive that immobilizes characters with 3 or more restraint on hit. The rolls are pretty high, so you might need to tank it if you don't have a strong page on your Mjongus die. I like to use Beyond on my purple tier because the damage will be minimized and the guard stance ignores debuffs. Blazing Strike is a melee page, rolling 4 to 8 evade, 9 to 14 pierce, 4 to 8 block, with the pierce inflicting 6 burn and giving Philip a negative emotion coin on hit. This page really wants to have a block on 2 to eat the strong pierce, but the evade on 1 is reasonably powerful as well. I usually just send Augury Kick into this one because it's unlikely to lose the 1. Beyond works as well, or you could get a specialized counter page like Prod the Weakness, Trails of Blue, or Sturdy Defense. Finally, his mass attack that he gets every 3 scenes, Scorching Desperation, which is a mass summation rolling 14 to 20 pierce to inflix 10 burn on hit. As long as you have enough late to cast a clashing page, this should be no issue for you. Eileen has 180 HP, 85 stagger, is slash damage, blunt stagger, and pierce injured, and has 6 passives. Puffy Broom, Shimmering, Fumigating Smoke, which gives all allies smoke equal to the amount of smoke this character has, Aerosol Diffusion, which gives all allies Puffy Broom while Eileen is alive, Oxide Overload, which gives all allies 10 smoke and removes their Puffy Broom passive when Eileen dies, and Prognosis, which adds a mass attack to her hand every 5 scenes. Her deck consists of 5 ranged pages, not including her mass attack. Meat Gear Imbue has 2 of 8 dice, rolling 3 to 9, 5 to 10, and on use, if the target has 5 or more smoke, give 2 haste and strength to a random ally next scene. If it's targeting an ally with 5 or more smoke, redirect it, otherwise just ignore it. 
Meet Gear Smoke Cycle, rules 5 to 8, 4 to 8 Pierce, both dealing 0.5 extra damage per stack of smoke on the target, as well as giving Eileen 2 smoke on use. This page has fairly low rolls, so you can clash into it with most things. Thought Gear Combust, rolls 4 to 8 Slash, 6 to 11 Blunt, 4 to 8 Block, with the Slash inflicting 1 smoke on hit, the Blunt doubling the amount of smoke on the target if they have burn, and gives Eileen 1 smoke on use. This page's 2 is quite strong, so you may want to clash into it with Augury Kick. Thought Gear Fortel rolls 5 to 10 Evade, 6 to 8 Slash, then inflicts 2 smoke on hit, and gives 1 Eileen 1 smoke on use. This page's damage output is quite low, so I would typically just ignore it. Thought Gear Oxide Overflow has 2 4 8 Blunt Dice that inflict 2 smoke on hit, and on use, if the target has 5 or more smoke, the offensive dice inflict 2 more smoke. This page is like Meat Gear Smoke Cycle and Roll Range, so it's the same deal there. Use any clashing page, page with a defensive dice, or just ignore it. Finally, her mass attack that she gets every 5 scenes is Thought Gear Advent. This is a summation that rolls 16 to 22 Blunt that inflicts 5 smoke and immobilizes a target next scene on hit. This page is more important to beat than Philip's mass attack and is slightly harder to beat, but is still fairly trivial. Greta has 250 HP, 110 stagger, is slash and blunt injured, and has 7 passives. Speed 3, Shimmering, Shark Skin, which gives her 3 protection each scene, but makes her take 3 additional damage from attacks while she has bleed. Night and Shining Dense Coals, which gives all allies 1 protection and stagger protection while Greta is alive. Guard Pidu, which inflicts all allies with 5 fragile next scene when she dies. Add Salt to Injury, which makes it so that if the target has 5 or more bleed, the first die the character plays in an engagement inflicts 1 fragile and hit. And Dermal Regeneration, which makes Greta recover 10 HP and gain 1 strength if she wasn't hit by an attack last scene. Her deck consists of 5 cards. Hunting Hour rolls 4 to 8, 7 to 10 Blunt, 4 to 9 Block, with the first Blunt inflicting 1 Paralysis next scene on Clash Win, the second inflicting 3 Bleed next scene on Clash Win, and both of them recovering 2 HP on hit. The 2 on this page is fairly strong, so you might want to use an Augury Kick to mitigate it, or just redirect it to someone who's Blunt resistant and tank it. Pau Saudi Slam rolls 4 to 9 Blunt, 5 to 9 Block, with the Blunt inflicting 2 Bleed next scene on Clash Win and recovering 2 HP on hit. This page is fairly easy to beat with pretty much any clashing page, or even something like Grace the Grass or Well of the City. Roundhouse Tail rolls 2 to 8 Blunt, 5 to 10 Slash, with the Blunt inflicting 2 Bleed next scene on Clash Win, the Slash inflicting 2 Paralysis next scene on Clash Win, and both recovering 2 HP on hit. This page is a powered down version of Hunting Hour, so any page that worked there will work here. Tail Whisk rolls 4 to 8 Slash, 5 to 9 Evade, with the Slash inflicting 2 Bleed next scene on Clash Win, and recovering 2 HP on hit. This page is almost identical to Pau Saudi Slam, so use the Light Regen or any Clashing page. Finally, Tackle Mount rolls 11 to 15 Blunt, 3 to 5 Slash, 3 to 5, 3 to 5 Blunt. All the dice recover 3 HP on hit, the first die destroys all of the Clash Loser's dice, and the other dice have their damage increased by the amount of bleed on the target. I like to use a Meongus Enhanced Augury Kick, but this is also a great place to send your Celestial Spear if you brought them. Again, if you're using Gebra's Floor, then Grey Split Vertical or Onrush will work fantastically here. Finally, Bremen has 200 HP, 60 Stagger, is Pierce and Blunt injured, and has 4 passives. Shimmering, Martial Song of the Battlefield, which gives an ally a random buff between Strength, Endurance, and Haste equal to the amount of light Bremen has. The Clumped Resolve, which makes them lose all light when staggered. And Erloshin's Dirge of the Wargrave, which gives all your librarians 3 Strength, Endurance, and Haste next scene when Bremen dies. Their deck consists of 5 pages, 3 of which are counter only. Concerta targets an ally and gives them 2 haste this scene if it's not redirected, and it has 2 4 to 10 blunt counters, with the first one giving 1 strength to 2 random allies on Clash Win. Music Therapy also targets allies and recovers the target's HP by 20 if it's not redirected. It has a single 5 to 11 blunt counter that gives 2 protection to the ally with the lowest HP next scene on Clash Win. Volklang will give all allies 1 strength and 20 HP if it's not redirected away from an ally, and it has 2 4 to 8 blunt counter dice. Fanciful Tune rolls 5 to 9, 4 to 10, 5 to 12 pierce, with the first two dice inflicting 1 feeble next scene on hit, and the third recovers 5 HP for 2 random allies on hit. This page has fairly high rolls, so you should clash into it with your Miongus die, Overcharge, or someone who just landed an Augury Kick. Finally, Menacing Tune has 2 blunt dice rolling 4 to 8 and inflicting 2 binds and 1 feeble on hit. This page isn't too hard to beat, but the debuffs are somewhat annoying, so I'd advise against using a light regen here unless you're confident you'll win both rolls. Generally, I like to focus down Bremen first. 
Start by clashing into the other pages while redirecting the Bremen pages that make sense to redirect, and then once they cast the non counter die page, pile a ton of slash damage onto them. You might want to switch your purple tier to slash dance to push even more damage, but it's not necessary. Take the phase fairly slowly because you have a bunch of sustain to get through the burn, and you don't want to get staggered and take a ton of damage or die. Once you've killed Bremen, you can often kill the other three on the next scene due to the buffs you get. If not, I'd kill Philip second, Greta third, and Eileen fourth. Some people kill Philip first because he has the highest damage output, and that's fine as well. You just switch Philip and Bremen in your kill order. Act 2 will have you fighting Oswald, Tanya, and Jae Hyun. Oswald has 250 HP and stagger, is slashed and blunt injured, and has 5 passives. Shimmering, Showtime, which makes all librarians take 2 to 4 stagger damage and makes him prioritize hitting the librarian with the current lowest stagger resist. I can shrug that off, makes him unable to take more than 50% of his max HP in a single scene. Farewell makes him take 50 stagger damage with whatever an ally dies. And the end of the show, which fully restores all librarians as stagger resist and halves all status ailments on them when Oswald dies. On the first scene, he'll be casting Shall We Start the Show, which is a mass individual rolling 6 to 10 blunt and spawning Miss Mermaid and Mr. Knife next scene, while he retreats for two scenes. He'll be casting some other pages, but I'll save that for later and instead talk about the other participants of the fight. Jae Hyun has 300 HP, 300 stagger, is pierce injured, and has 3 passives. Shivering, Entangled Strings, which gives all allies manipulator of odds, inflicts a random librarian with 2 bind at the start of each scene, and makes it so that when he casts Draining Strings, all puppet strings are removed. You don't need to worry about that for now though. His last passive is Unbound Flesh, which gives all librarians 1 to 3 haste and 1 dice power for the rest of the act when he dies. On the first scene, he'll be casting two copies of Conjoining Strings, which cannot be redirected, and on combat start, adds red strings to the hands of the targets, as well as Miss Mermaid and Mr. Knife. The page itself rolls 5 to 8, 47 pierce, 46 block, and it has a 46 block counter that inflicts one feeble next scene on Clash win. Red Strings is a page that gives the status Red Strings to the character that has it in their hand, and it doesn't get removed when used. The player version rolls 28 block and on Clash Lose exhausts it and it deals 10 stair damage to Jae Hyun. The enemy version rolls 10 block and has the same text. Red Strings is a status that makes it so that if there are two more characters with the Red Strings after a couple of scenes, all characters with Red Strings will die and Mixed Bunny will be spawned. But librarians with Red Strings get 10 haste and Red Strings is removed if Jae Hyun or Oswald die. This page can be mitigated with a light regen page if you need, but it's also not too hard to beat with your clashing pages. He has 6 other pages. Not a Chance has 3 3 8 block dice, with the first and last inflicting 1 feeble next hit on Clash Win, and the second inflicting 1 disarm next hit on Clash Win. You should basically always ignore this page. Needlework is a ranged page, rolling 4 10, 4 10, 3 9 slash. You should use Augury Kick, Slash Jill Spear, or similar to Clash with it. You can also use a light regen page on your Mryongus die to reasonable effect. Cripple rolls 5 to 7 block, 4 to 6, 4 to 6 pierce, with both pierces inflicting 1 binds next scene on hit. This page can be beaten with basically any 3 cost bomb. If you kill Tanya before Jae Hyun, he'll start casting Backstitch, which is a ranged page rolling 29 to 29 slash, 4 to 8 block, with the block inflicting 1 feeble next scene on Clash win. This is so that you can still remove puppet strings even if Tanya is dead. The last two pages will be cast if Jae Hyun is alone. Straining Strings is a mass individual rolling 5 to 9, 5 to 8 pierce that gives one puppet string next scene on hit. Puppet String makes the speed die with the lowest value uncontrollable and will target allies with attacks. It can stack up to 3 times and it's removed if Jae Hyun dies. This page is fairly annoying, but you'll rarely see it, especially since you can somewhat control when he casts it. Controlling Strings is a melee page with the same dice as Conjoining Strings, but will give one puppet string next scene on combat start. It's the same deal here, easy to beat, but can also just be mitigated with a block on 1. Tanya has 340 HP, 300 stagger, is blunt injured, and has 4 passives. Shimmering, Fierce Sandstorm, which makes all librarians take 3-5 damage at the end of each scene, as well as making Jae Hyun's offensive dice inflict 1 bleed on hit. Violent Sandstorm, which makes all librarians deal 3 additional damage with attacks for the rest of the act once Tanya dies. And Burning Resolve to fight on makes it so that if there are no other allies present at the end of the scene, Tanya gains 1 strength and 2 endurance and gains 2 speed dice for the rest of the act. Her deck consists of 7 cards. Fisticuffs rolls 4-7, 4-7, 4-7 pierce. The second die has an anti-recycling clause, the third die deals 3 bonus damage on hit, and it has a 5-7 block counter die. This page can be beaten by any of your 2 or 3 cost clashing pages. 
kicks in, stomps, rolls 6 to 10 slash, 6 to 10 blunt, 6 to 9 block. The slash deals 3 bonus damage on hit, the blunt inflicts 1 process next scene on hit, and it has a 5 to 7 block counter. This page needs a 3 or 4 cost bomb to beat it, usually. You could use Augury Kick here because the page has a defensive on 3 as well. Overspeed rolls 3 to 7 block, 3 to 6, 3 to 6 blunt, but if Tanya's speed is higher than the targets, the dice gain 6 power. If this is targeting a slower speed die, just redirect it as the unempowered rolls are extremely unimpressive. Lupin Onslaught rolls 5 to 9 slash, 6 to 10 block, 4 to 8 blunt, and power nulls itself in the target. Overcharge works quite well here as your purple tier generally has the fewest power boosters, but just don't use your Myongas die into it. Beatdown rolls 29 to 35 blunt and deals 5 bonus damage to the target on hit, and it has 3 5 to 8 block counters. The joke here is that you can redirect this to your characters with wedge strings to exhaust the page and remove the status effect, and I highly recommend that you do that. Intimidate rolls 5 to 7 5 to 7 blunt, both giving Tanya 1 strength next scene on hit. It gives Tanya 1 strength next scene on use, and it has a 5 to 8 block counter. You don't want these to land, so you should use a fairly strong page into this, as your light regen has a decent chance of losing. Finally, Pitch Black Pulverizer rolls 13 to 13, 13 to 16 blunt, 5 to 8 block. The first die deals 5 bonus stagger damage on hit, and the second deals 5 damage on hit. You should use a Myongist Enhanced True Trigon Formation or Fully Empowered Emotional Turbulence to clash into this page. Mr. Knife has 60 HP, 40 stagger, is blunt weak, and has 2 passives. Shimmering and Twas a Joy to perform by your side, which makes Oswald take 70 stagger damage on death, even if he hasn't returned yet. Their deck consists of 4 pages and red strings. Casual Toss is a ranged page rolling 3 to 8, 3 to 7 pierce. This page is really easy to beat with pretty much any page, including your light regen. Guillotine is a melee page that rolls 8 to 12 slash, destroying the target's next die on hit, and it has a 5 to 8 block counter that inflicts one bleed next scene on hit. This page is somewhat annoying to beat, so you should just mitigate it with a block on 1. Knife Barrage is a ranged page rolling 5 to 8, 4 to 8, 4 to 8, 3 to 7 pierce, with the first 3 dice inflicting one bleed next scene on clash win, and boosting the next die's power by 1, and the last die gives one haste and strength to Mr. Knife on hit. This page is really easy to beat with anything with a reasonably strong die. Crosscut is a melee page rolling 5 to 8, 5 to 8 pierce, 4 to 8 block. The pierces inflict 2 bleed next scene on hit, and it has a 4 to 8 block counter. This page can be beaten with a 3 cost bomb fairly consistently. Miss Mermaid has 70 HP, 50 stagger, is slash weak, and has the same 2 passes as Mr. Knife. She has 4 pages and red strings. Aria of Auspice is a ranged page rolling 3 to 7, 3 to 7, 3 to 6 pierce. It gives 2 protection to an ally with the lowest current HP on use, and it has a 3-7 blunt counter. You can use pretty much anything to mitigate this page. Aria of Courage is a ranged page rolling 4-8, 3-8 pierce. It gives 1 strength to the ally with the lowest current HP on use, and it has a 4-8 blunt counter. It's the same deal here, use basically anything. Aria of Encouragement is a melee page rolling 6-10, 5-10 block, recovers 8 HP for the ally with the lowest current HP on use, and it has a 5-9 block counter. You should basically always just ignore this page. Finally, Horrendous Pitch is a ranged page that rolls 5 to 9 pierce that deals 8 stagger damage on hit, and it has a 4 to 8 blunt counter. The 8 stagger damage isn't too bad, so you should just tank this page with a block on 1. Mixed Bunny has 140 HP, 70 stagger, is pierce weak, blunt injured, and has 3 passives. Shimmering, Twas a Joy to perform by your side, and Amalgamation, which makes it so if they're spawned by the effects of red strings, their max HP is increased by 20 per character that was sacrificed, as well as gaining the passive abilities of the sacrificed librarians. Their deck consists of all the pages that Mr. Knife and Miss Mermaid use. Note that if any of Mr. Knife, Miss Mermaid, or Mix Bunny are alive for too many scenes, I think 3 for all of them. They'll cast Fanfare, which has a 10 to 10 blunt die that deals 50% of the user's current HP as bonus damage on hit and makes the user die next scene. When Oswald comes back, he'll have a set of 8 pages. Let's start with his mass attack, Climax, which is a mass summation rolling 18 to 20 blunt. It deals 8 bonus stagger damage on hit and inflicts random status effects between 2 fragile, 2 disarm, 2 feeble, 2 protection, 2 strength, or 2 endurance to targets at random. Here, Catch is a melee page rolling 3 to 10 evade, 8 to 11 blunt, 3 to 6 block. The blunt is really hard to beat, and the evade on 1 is pretty annoying, so I'd either either ignore this page or use Augury Kick into it. Pow, Kablamo is a melee page rolling 3 to 10 evade, 5 to 7, 4 to 6 blunt, both dealing 4 stagger damage on hit. This page will fold to a 3 cost bomb with a block on 1, like Identified Weak Point or Emotional Turbulence. 
Ready for a surprise? Is a counter only page rolling 4 to 8, 4 to 7 slash counter, 4 to 8 block counter with the slash dice inflicting one bleed next in on hit. Shall we somersault these? Is a range page rolling 5 to 8, 4 to 7, 3 to 7, 3 to 6 blunt with the first two dice inflicting two burn on hit and the last two dice inflicting one burn on hit. The rolls of this page are quite low, so you can probably beat it with most of your pages if you have a bit of strength. When Oswald is alone, he'll gain some new pages. Don't Resist is a range page rolling 5 to 7 blunt, and it has two 4 to 8 slash counters that inflict one bleed next scene on hit, and on combat start, the target's resistances are changed to fatal for this scene. The stats change is the most threatening part of this page, as 5 to 7 can be easily mitigated with the light regen page, so just make sure that the person this is hitting isn't getting free hit by other pages. We need you, you know, is a range page rolling 5 to 7, 4 to 6 blunt, 3 to 10 evade, with the blunt dealing 6 dagger damage on hit, and on combat start, if the target is staggered at the end of the scene, they turn into an ally. The offensive dice aren't too hard to beat, but if the target's low on stagger resist, you might want to redirect it to someone else. Introducing our newest member, is a range page rolling 5 to 8, 5 to 7 blunt, 4 to 6 block, and on combat start, it spawns makes money next scene unless Oswald is dead. Again, the rolls here aren't high, but adding a new combatant is annoying, so try to nuke Oswald down here if he's below 50% HP. What I like to do is that on the scene Mr. Knife and Miss Mermaid spawn, throw all of your mass attacks and kill them immediately. In my case, I have Blood Spreading, Raging Storm Love, and various ego pages from Xiao and Malkuth. Generally, sending 3 mass attacks will kill at least one of them and stagger the other, depending on the damage type of the mass attacks. After that, just clash with every page with offensive dice and send your extra dice at Tanya. When Oswald comes back, nuke him down, then turn your attention back to Tanya. Once she dies, you should be able to kill Jaehyun before you can get up to any shenanigans with puppet strings. The last act will have you fighting Elna, Pluto, and Argalia. Elna has 400 HP, 310 stagger, is slash injured, and has 3 passives. Shimmering, Speed, which gives her an extra speed die, another one on the 4th scene, and another one if there's an enemy at emotion level 4 or higher, but doesn't give her extra speed dice from emotion level bonuses. And Blood Fiendish, which gives her health hauler, and if she recovers 3 or more HP in a single scene, gains 1 strength next scene. Her deck consists of 5 pages. Sanguine Nails rolls 4 to 7 blunt, 3 to 8, 3 to 7 slash, all recovering 2 HP on hit. This page is equivalent to the player's Crimson Claws, and can be beaten by basically any 3 die page. Absorb rolls 5 to 8 slash 5 to 8 pierce, both recovering 4 HP on hit. On combat start, Elna has lost staff sandwich on herself, and it has a 5 to 8 block counter. This page can be beaten by your 2 cost with 2 dice, or most of your 3 cost pages. You can also mitigate it or tank it, need be. Regurgitation rolls 6 to 9 slash that inflicts 2 anti-recovery next scene on hit. It power nulls itself in the target's page, and it has a 5 to 8 block counter. Anti-recovery makes this so that the afflicted character cannot recover HP or stagger, and one stack of anti-recovery falls off every scene. The anti-recovery is a little annoying, as is the power null. I'd use something like Augury Cook or Celestial Spear into this page because of the power null, but if you have a healthy librarian, you could also just tank it with something like Raise the Grass. Unending Thirst is a mass individual rolling 6 to 9, 18 to 19 slash, with the second slash recovering 3 HP. The first die is fairly reasonable to beat, but the second die is difficult unless you have a page with a very strong 2. I'd probably just ignore it or send something like Celestial Spear to beat the 1. Finally, Blood Spreading is a mass summation rolling 17 to 25 that recovers HP equal to the amount of damage dealt on hit. This mass attack is fairly easy to beat as long as you have 3 light and should be one of your highest priority targets to resolve cleanly. Pluto has 380 HP, 275 stagger, is blunt damage and pierce injured, and has 4 passives. Shimmering, Speed, Unconscionable, which makes him use an unjust contract every scene, and Stygian Shade, which spawns a shade on the second scene, which gets a copy of the patron librarian's hand and deck, but if the patron librarian isn't present, another random librarian's deck will get copied instead. I like having my purple tier as the patron librarian for that reason, as you can either switch to a blank deck to lower the incoming damage, or you can stick to guard stance and the shade will immobilize itself fairly often. His deck consists of 3 of the unjust contracts and 3 other pages. Let's start with the unjust contracts. Unjust contract offense rolls 4 to 9 pierce, 7 to 10 slash, and on hit as an unjust counterpart offense to the target's hand next scene, noting that only one can be held at a time. The offense counterpart will shuffle itself on top of your deck and boost your damage by 1 for the next scene, essentially replacing your draw for turn with 1 damage. You can also pay 1 light to exhaust the page if you don't want it. The rolls here are fairly high, so I just try to mitigate it with a block die. 
unjust contract light rolls 8 to 11 6 to 7 blunt and adds an unjust counterpart light to the target's hand next scene and again only one can be held at a time the light counterpart restores an additional light but adds a copy of fetters to the deck fetters is a zero cost that exhausts on play this counterpart essentially gives you an extra light but sometimes ruins your draw again you can exhaust a counterpart by paying one light the page itself is strong on 1, but somewhat weak on 2, so you can use a bomb page with a block on 1 to resolve it fairly cleanly. Finally, Unjust Contract Defense rules 6 to 10, 5 to 9 slash, and adds Unjust Counterpart Defense to the target's hand next scene. The counterpart discards a random other page from hand and gives protection equal to its cost next scene, trading your pages for protection. And of course, if you don't want the effect, you can pay 1 light to exhaust it. This page is fairly strong on 1 and 2, but it loses to Fully Empowered Emotional Turbulence, among other things. Magical Spear is a range page ruling 4 to 8, 4 to 8, 3 to 7 pierce with a 5 to 7 block counter. This page is fairly easy to beat with any non-utility page. Magic Impact is a melee page that rolls 8 to 12 block with 6 to 9 blunt, with the blunt dealing 3 bonus dagger damage on hit. This one is a bit harder to beat, but will lose to Bulky Impact or 3 cost bombs. Finally, Deluge of Brachial Quietusis is a mass individual rolling 5 to 8, 5 to 8, 4 to 7 pierce. This page should be fairly easy to beat as long as you have a 3 cost bomb to send into it, but if you're lacking lighter pages, it's not terrible to just tank it. Before I talk about Argelia, let's go over the shade that Pluto spawns. It has 155 HP, 95 stagger, is normal to everything, and has 3 passives. Speed. Without Light, which makes it so when Pluto dies, the shade dies, and Powerful Shadow, which gives its dice one power and makes it use a page from its own deck every scene. Its deck only has two pages. Shade at Assault rolls 4 to 8, 3 to 8, and on Combat Start, boosts Offensive Dice power by 1 for the scene. This page is fairly easy to beat with a Clashing Page or your Light Regen that has a block on 1. Shaded Strike rolls 4 to 8 Pierce, 4 to 8 Blunt, 3 to 7 Pierce, with the first die inflicting 1 binds next scene on hit, and it restores 1 Light. This page can be beaten by any of your 3 cost bombs, quick suppression, or just be mitigated with a block on 1. Finally, Argelia has 575 HP, 410 stagger, is slash stagger and blunt injured, and has 5 passives. Shimmering, Speed, Resonance, which gives his dice 2 power if the difference between his speed and heart's vibration is 1 or less. Yudderatore der Ensemble Reverbero, which makes his HP unable to fall below 100 while his allies are alive, and gives him a speed die for every other ensemble member that died this reception. And Emozioni Intensificantasi, which makes it so that every 4 scenes, the ensemble members gain 1 strength and endurance each scene, stacking infinitely. Additionally, at the end of each scene, all characters' emotion levels go up by 2. His deck consists of 9 pages, 3 of which are mass attacks. Largo rolls 4 to 8 block, 5 to 9 slash, and on hit, if the target has 6 or more vibration, it gets reduced by 1. This page has fairly high rolls, but only 1 offensive die, so it can just get tanked. Oscillating Sickle rolls 5 to 9, 5 to 9 slash, both dealing bonus damage equal to the target's vibration on hit. This page should get clashed into by a 3 cost bomb, augury kick, or bulky impact. Cleave rolls 7 to 12 slash 6 to 8 block. The slash power nulls the target's dice next scene on hit, and on combat start, Argelia has the amount of status ailments he has. The power null effect is pretty brutal, so I'd recommend clashing into it with a Myongus Dire Celestial Spear. Controlled Resonance rolls 3 to 8 slash 3 to 8 blunt, and on combat start, this scene, Resonance triggers if the target has 4 or more vibration. This page is easy to beat, but you should be aware when you cast it so you don't clash into stuff that'll lose to the 2 plus power. Allegro rolls 5 to 9 slash, 5 to 9 blunt, 4 to 7 block, with the offensive dice giving the target 2 vibration on hit. This page you get clashed into by your 3 cost bombs or augury kick. Trails of Blue rolls 8 to 17 slash, 5 to 9 block, and it power nulls itself in the target's page. You should just mitigate this with a block on 1. Tempestuous Danza is a mass individual rolling 5 to 9 slash, and on hit, the target's vibration is set to 4. 5 to 9 is somewhat annoying, especially if you don't have good cards in hand, but you should win most of the time. Crescendo is a mass individual rolling 6 to 10 pierce, 9 to 22 slash, with the slash dealing 50% more damage at the first die hit. You're not going to beat the second die, so you should focus on beating the first one so you don't end up taking a ton of damage. Augury Kick, Overcharge, Celestial Spear, and True Track information work well here. Finally, Grand Finale is a mass summation rolling 30 to 40 pierce. This summation is on par with Greater Split Horizontal, so you need to use your strongest pages here. 
In this last act, I like to focus down Elena first, then Pluto, then Argalia. Elena has a lot of sustain, but she lacks defensive dice so you can nuke her down fairly quickly in a few scenes. I'd still recommend clashing with basically anything with offensive dice to keep your HP high though. The shade shouldn't be too much of a problem, and you shouldn't send too many pages its way since it'll die on its own once you kill Pluto. If you do end up losing during any stage, it's fine because you have 5 floors to beat this reception, which is a pretty crazy amount. In the next video, we'll be finishing the game and going over the final rewards we get from this gauntlet. I'll see you soon, and as always, thank you for watching.